Excellent. Hello and welcome to the SMI community meeting. Today is Wednesday, June 24th, 2020. And welcome to everybody that's been here. I see a lot of new names today, which is fantastic. My name is Lachlan Evenson. I'll be moderating and Bridget is with me taking notes. Bridget has uh, so kindly put in the link to the agenda and notes um, in the chat. So welcome everybody, we'll get into it. We have an agenda, we have 30 minutes, so we'd like to drive a very quick productive meeting. But if there's anything that's coming up, feel free to add it to the agenda as we go. If we don't get it to today, don't, don't get to it today, we will endeavor to uh, get to it next time. Okay, so right into it, stand up discussion items, website uh, blog post guidelines, Bridget, yeah, like I was going to mention that because we talked about it last week and I said I would do it and I have not done it, but I also have not forgotten and I will actually do it. So hopefully we'll get our uh, blog post um, blog post going. The reason I want to talk about it is because people might have felt discouraged about writing a blog post about the things they're doing in SMI because we haven't published the one that we talked about from Solo. That's entirely on me. We will do that. And please think about what blog posts you might want to put on the SMI website. That is fantastic. Thank you very much. So yes, if you are working on SMI and you have a great story to share, there is a premises that we just added to SMI-spec.io for blogs, which is a neutral place under the CNCF where you can put your stories about how you are solving problems with SMI or anything. So, and we actually have an entry from Solo about some work that they'd done. Um, Bridget's adding that. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have top level spec update. Almost ready to go, needs one more reviewer. Uh, Bridget's name is there. It is. I added it, but it's not really about me. It's more, um, I think Stefan and Thomas might have been talking about it, and they, aren't, they don't look to be on the call right now. But if there is somebody who is a spec reviewer who reads these notes later or whatever, um, yes, uh, by the way, there's a question in the chat about, can there be a link for the blog? Yes, I will add all of that information to these notes um, when I stop talking, which I am going to do now. I quickly just grabbed them, grabbed it there. I actually had it up easy to find. Okay, so if you are on PR um, 169, it looks like there were some changes uh, that Stefan has proposed. Uh, Thomas has actually uh, LGTM them, we need another round. Michelle had LGTM them, but Michelle is out at the moment. So if anybody else is a reviewer on the specification or wants to be a reviewer on the specification, um, we don't mind if you don't have a binding um, LGTM, please feel free to review it anyway and add your comments about this. So this is, um, looks like changes to some top level fields in traffic access and splits. So I won't go over that. It looks like it's good to go, but um, if you wanna take a look, please uh, do so. Okay, we have a question from Slack. Timeframe for 0 0.4.0 release of the SMI SDK Go. Thomas R thought it was possible to do it without further delay. What does Stefan think? I don't know if we have Stefan here. Quick inspection, no, and we do not have Thomas either. Does anybody have anything to say about getting out the latest release of the SDK? Would that help them? Do they need to voice any concerns? Nope, I will, I will go and pull the thread on that with Thomas and, and Stefan in, um, in the CNCF Slack channel for SMI. And if this is your first time as well, there is a, a SMI channel in the CNCF Slack where all these discussions happen. So you're welcome to join that too. Okay, um, next one is a question from uh, Slack. Uh, do traffic specs apply to all backends? Why are matches for traffic split in traffic split backend and not in traffic split spec? Why? Is the matches type for traffic split loaded uh, typed local object reference instead of string like it is for traffic target? We have Kalia there, uh, Kalia on the line. Did you want to speak to that, Kalia? Yeah, uh, I think uh, regarding the first question for why it's associated with the backends, just looking at the example for the YAML for that, um, I guess it didn't make it obvious that 
the matches would apply per back end, I thought it would apply to both. So I was expecting the matches to be in the traffic split spec itself and not inside each back end object. And then on top of that, yeah, just wondering why there's this type discrepancy. Okay. Can you get, can you provide some links on exactly where the uh, doc documentation is not concise? Yeah. Because I would like to raise an issue there, or you can raise an issue. Yeah, I, I have you raised an issue? issue as well. Well. Um, Thank you so much about uh, Kalia for putting that detailed info in Slack. And if it isn't already in an issue, it would be awesome if it could be, just so that that way we don't lose it in Slack. Yeah. Okay. There's the um, traffic split. Um, like the API. Yep. Um, and then we can compare it to traffic target. Okay. And was there documentation as well? Yeah. And then okay. this is the documentation looking at multiple windows. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, and I'll add so, the attendees list. Excellent. Thank you so much. I think, you know, does anybody have any, do they want to comment on this now? I know Stefan probably will want to comment. So I think capturing this in an issue with the detail you provided and then in the SMI uh, channel in the CNCF Slack, Let's go and um, ask Thomas and um, and Stefan, and then I could probably do some work to make the documentation a little clearer. So are you hoping for um, making the documentation clear and then, or just some background as to why this has been done? I think Michelle could probably offer this up as well. Yeah, probably. Oh, Michelle was also um, kind. Well, I don't think Michelle knew either. Okay. Um, but yeah, looking for background and then perhaps updating the documentation. Okay. It's fine that the types are different. I think it just makes it harder because then we have to reuse code paths probably, or like I would expect consistency. So I don't know if they're trying to update traffic target eventually. Um, there are lots of questions, so. Yes. Well, thank you for taking a look and keep bringing those questions because we want to make sure they're answered because if you're coming across this, um, I'm sure other people will find it too. So let's make it clear. Um, okay, so create an issue and tag Stefan. Yep, create an issue. Uh, you can send it to me in the Slack and then I'll kind of fan it out to whoever or you can just tag Stefan, Michelle and Thomas or anybody else who would like to pick it up too. Feel free to comment on that. Okay, cool. Thanks. I know we've done some strange type changes across API versions, which had caught us up in the past, but I think if the APIs haven't changed, it may just be an oversight and we might need to rev them so we don't have typing clashes because that does cause some pain when you're implementing it. Okay. Extremely valid. Thank you so much for raising that, Kalia. Anybody else want to weigh in here? Okay, that is it for uh, written agenda. I'll open the floor up to any comments, questions, or other discussion. Do we have anything planned for the upcoming KubeCon mid, mid August? Is there any? I know it's obviously virtual, but um, is there anything community wise? I know there was, um, I thought Michelle might be submitting a proposal, but I'm not sure. So I'd ask her on that. I know in previous, we w we had planned to do a face to face. Uh, I don't know if we pegged out because I think anything in sandbox needs to apply for a session. Now it's not. Yeah. I think given. sandbox doesn't get a session right off the bat. Right. You have to ask. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, you know, put, put a, an item here. I'll ask Michelle if there was anything, submitted. I did not submit anything. Do you have any other ideas on top of that, Michael? Because I know that you've come up with a bunch in the past. Well, it would be good on the one hand to kind of like give a little bit of a status, like where we are and you know what what's the current uh, thinking, mm -hmm. direction, whatever. Um, and potentially, you know, there might be others out there who 
you know, might want to start contribute or have something. Pretty much about awareness and kind of like okay, showing you know where we are and what what we plan. So, I mean, as I said, it's given that it's not a physical event. It's a little bit hard. You know, otherwise you could just say, you know, hey, let's have lunch together or whatever and, and hang out. But do we know? Yeah, I think they're. Like are they doing a project pavilion sort of thing at all for virtual for like projects? What I I don't like know. Like you can apply for know, room at the virtual booth or whatever. Yeah, um, I know Karen is looking at that for Helm. So I'll find out about the virtual pavilion thing, which is some kind of premises where you can put things. I think the other avenue outside of that event is. We did do an SMI CNCF webinar probably about um, two months ago that uh, Bridget moderated with Thomas, myself, and Stefan. Um, and then even at the Camp Cloud Native yesterday, there was a fireside chat with Bridget and Lee Calcote um, with the new stack. So I encourage you to also think we're trying to do those kind of outreach things in between KubeCon events as well. So if you have other events or you think we should do a webinar and you want to be part of that webinar, Michael, we there are other outlets as well. Um, but I'll find out about the project provision. I can also ping the CNCF and say, is there any room uh, to do an update? Because we could see if their schedule has room, I'm not sure. So how about we ask that question too? Because I think awesome. it's good whether we do a, a panel or we do an update, or we do a fixed session, I think they all would be good just for awareness. Cheers. Yeah, we might have an answer on that by next time. Um, yeah. Just because, they say might because I've been trying to even just schedule um, the Helm session with the CNCF, and they are maybe still a week or two out from actually telling me when my session is. So it's like there's a lot being rearranged and flux yeah and so once they get a lot more of that settled they might be able to answer questions like is there room for a sandbox project to talk about things okay thanks for bringing that up michael do we have any lee's other on now lee's on hi lee is there any uh any other questions hey this is dominic uh from cisco i have a question hey dominic and go ahead Hey, thanks. And uh, I was wondering about the uh, scope of uh, SMI. And just for a little bit of background, we see a lot of interest lately in um, multi-mesh, multi-cluster, or uh, single-mesh, uh, multi-cluster. And uh, I understand that that is uh, currently not in scope of SMI. But uh, as a preparation, I was wondering if uh, SMI may take um, um, some into the scope, some more self-awareness or uh, queerability. So for example, to be able to ask the Kubernetes cluster, what service mesh instances are currently installed? Um, could be multiple instances on, on one uh, cluster as well. So what instances are currently installed? What services do these instances uh, of service mesh know of and what workloads back these services? So that we have more of a queryability. The reason why I'm asking is I was um, checking out Solo's uh, service mesh hub and uh, the service mesh hub actually includes code that um, parses the, the, the available objects, right? And does some quote unquote, like reverse engineering, what services are there? And um, I figured SMI as uh, the quasi standard or the only standard that tells us currently what the proper service mesh is, right? maybe, and maybe the right place for that. Well, I, I know Solo is working on a blog post for at the SMI website about service mesh hubs. So <laughs> I don't know if we'll get more detail there, but there will be a blog post about that soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Lackey? Yeah, I think, I, I think the scope of SMI can change. So you have that flexibility. I think, you know, when, when we initially opened it up, it was to 
create a common abstraction that provided the value of all service meshes so that you didn't need to be fixated on the implementation and create and, and hence have an ecosystem of implementations. I would, uh, we've had conversations, Edith, Edith Levine, who's from the CEO of Solo has been part of the conversations. She had a conversation about potentially with me, you know, talk, bringing those APIs into SMI. So there hasn't been a formal proposal. Um, I've also seen similar APIs in Linkerd. They have a multi, a multi cluster set of APIs which can stat at the moment which clusters are running Linkerd and then wire them together. I think the most pertinent uh, things that I'm seeing, and this is just my opinion. Obviously, this is a a community we can we can bring this up together. Multi cluster, circuit breaker, and um, uh, uh, rate limiting are the biggest glaring things that are missing from SMI, in my opinion, that almost all circuit, uh, almost all service meshes implement in some form or another. Um, so if you have something, Dominic, that you want to propose, um, you mentioned solos, we can go back and talk to solo. We can invite Edith here to have that conversation. I think she would be willing to see, you know, if there is value actually having that spec go upstream. I think for the first, you know, first initial specs that landed in SMI, there wasn't anything. Now we're seeing a lot more tooling in the ecosystem. And if we want to extract those APIs from tools and have them in the spec, I'd be willing to do that. And I don't mind if it's app mesh that brings us that from AWS. I don't mind. I'd be willing to consider those things. Um, and we should be making sure that SMI covers the largest amount of use cases that we think are important for service mesh users. Um, so that's kind of the, the high level view. As, as for action items, I could go back and ping eat it on the CNCF and say, hey, there's been questions about whether we could look at multi-cluster interfaces and somebody suggested service uh, solos, service mesh hub one looks like a good place to start. Would you be interested in having that conversation of either donation or understanding it more? And then we can talk about that. So if you don't, if you don't mind uh, for me to chime in real quick, uh, I just want yeah, to emphasize, ahead. I think that the multi, multi-cluster, multi-cluster, multi-mesh, I would think is already step two. Um, step one, that is what I was currently interested in, is um, the more of the self-awareness of SMI when it comes to only one mesh instance. So for example, Service Mesh Hub currently parses the deployments and looks for a deployment that has a container and is there the string linked D in that container or is still D in that container and then concludes that this is an instance of an Istio mesh or an instance of a linked D mesh. And I was curious if uh, we should extend SMI with objects that tell us that here is an instance of a linked D mesh on this cluster. And here is an instance of an Istio D mesh on this cluster. Basically as a prerequisite or step one to multi-clustering but not jumping to multi-cluster right away because that opens up many, many additional questions. And can I, can I tag onto the back of that? What would you do by knowing that? Or what, what is your intent to do with that information? Then uh, that comes then to step number two that enables step number two for multi-mesh because if you have, a, if you have a, um, an Uber control plane similar to service mesh hub, that uh -huh. control plane needs that information. And currently right. service mesh hub reaches into the implementation of Istio and reaches into the implementation of Linkerd. But I was thinking if there, is a, if there is a common abstraction on an SMI level, then it is of course easier to, uh, to, to reach into the spec than instead of into the implementation. I mean, this is this is a great amount of detail, Dominic. I think you know what I would propose is: Would you be interested in in flagging a proposal issue so at least I we can shop that around to the Linkerd folks, the console folks. You know, we we have uh, AWS folks here; they might be looking to solve the same thing. At least then we can have a start a discussion and bring that to bear. I don't think it's like high level. 
I see value in that. I don't see why SMI couldn't take that. It's not my complete decision. Everybody needs to decide that. But um, I think it's not, it's not a bad idea. And I'd be willing to create the process or at least have people propose new APIs that provide value. Because at the moment, we're iterating on the ones that are already there. But what we're losing is context of new awareness or new features that people actually need in service meshes. Um, and we want to make sure that they're represented in SMI. So would you be interested in, in jotting down just, you know, narrative form like you've given us what you want to I do, have why a, this is important or have you oh, already absolutely. done it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I have one, uh, I have one issue on the SMI spec uh, GitHub repo. It's number 170 and uh, a little bit back and forth uh, with uh, Thomas, Thomas G. Okay. But, uh, yeah, if, uh, if you wanted to chime in, uh, would be great. I'd be interested if the, the community as a whole is interested to make this service meshes more self-aware, so to say. Essentially, yeah, the, the, for my part, I think the, 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 as a spec, like having the ability to identify which type of mesh it is that, um, that, you're, that, the, that, that, hmm, that you're interfacing with, um, can make a lot of sense. The implementation of that discovery and that synchronization, that's probably, a, you know, beyond the scope of, of a, a spec it, itself. Uh, like the implementation that you're speaking of, Dominic, and searching for the container image name inside of Service Mesh Hub is, is one way to go about that. It is helpful to be, I think, a bit more self-aware. Being, being self-aware then enables some of the other use cases that you're describing. Um, some of which are uh, covered in some related projects that, that we've kind of spoken about on this call in the past um, about, you know, homogeneous uh, multi-cluster and then hetero heterogeneous multi-cluster as well. Uh, as a, on a related topic, since we're talking about Service Mesh Hub as much as we are, I'll mention that um, well, there's a, a similar, there's a, another management plane project uh, called Meshery it, uh, the community is actively working on enhancing what's referred to as mesh sync, um, which Dominic is precisely what you're referring to in terms of being um, continually in sync with um, the notion that there are one or any number of the same type or different type of service meshes in the environment. Um, and so it might be a point of interest for you. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I agree with what Lee said, you know, getting the spec up there and leaving the implementations to decide how they want to fulfill the contract point of that spec, but having a spec that allows interoperability or a tool chain, ecosystem based tool chain to hook into that, um, you know, much as we've seen with Flagger hook into all the service meshes via SMI to do its uh, rollouts. If I'm glad that there are there there are some several instances of this converging out there, so it might be time to have that conversation because I've seen a simple similar thing from Linkerd. Um, uh, so yeah, and I'm not sure if Istio has something similar to do, you know, mesh mesh discovery. But I think having people from all those communities actually come and say, here is what the spec should look like. We probably have enough to go off already in what Meshery's done and what um, Solo's done and what Linkerd's done to converge on something. I think at this point you lead with implementation and then extract specification out of implementation rather than deliberate on something that's never been used before. We're at that point of it now. So if it's valuable to everyone, let's just extract where it's implemented and figure out what the spec needs to look like from that. Two minutes left. Anything else? Two minutes left. There's something something for me, and that is that just that we, you know we we've I mentioned we've talked about the conform SMI conformance tooling, um, well for a, for a long time actually, but the the project is finally in flight. Um, the design specs of I think we we mentioned maybe a month or more ago, kind of the a call for review of the the specs. I'm trying to find where we have the meeting minutes. Yeah, the, at the bottom of the meeting minutes are. Um, right next to where Bridget is typing is a link to this back if you're interested in reviewing kind of the approach to uh, being taken in that project. Um, and uh, what am 
I trying to say that uh, it w we're probably on on schedule for about a about a month out maybe from uh, well, be, being able to have repeatable tooling that uh, where where you can um, define assertions on um, what conformance is, uh, of each of the four specs is, and then and repeatable kind of tooling to run those um, tests. Tests. And so, um, was that a call for feedback? So you're asking us to. Yeah, um, there has been uh, previously, but uh, but there's feedback is most welcome now as well. Or just the it, um, and yeah. excellent. That's great. Uh, great to hear that. I will take a look. Thank you, Lee. Yeah. All right, we are at time. Uh, Anything, uh, we made it through the agenda. Please add any items for the next call in two weeks time from today um, and feel free to add them. We'll, we'll carve out some space in the, the notes doc to add them. Thank you very much to Bridget for taking notes. I would like to ask if anybody would like to moderate the next one before you all leave. Any hands? Thanks, Maria. Thanks for joining. As usual, if there are no other volunteers, happy to. You know, I was coming for you, Michael, if Lockie hadn't jumped <laughs> I know, I know. That's you were like, I oh, said. Lockie showed up. That's why she didn't try to talk me into it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, thank you. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks for joining. Bye.